Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Welcome to today's Daily Fountain, the Daily Devotional Guide of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Today is Wednesday, the 19th of October, the year of our Lord, 2022. Let us pray. Almighty Father, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that the words that I preach will not be my words, but your words. Grant me the grace to speak words that will build up, edify, and encourage my listeners. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The theme of today's message is restoration. Restoration. And we are taking our text from Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 13 to 20. Isaiah 60, 13 to 20. The glory of Lebanon will come to you. The pine, the fair, the cypress together to adorn the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place of my feet. The sons of your oppressors will come bowing before you. All who despise you will bow down at your feet, and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Although you have been forsaken and hated with no one traveling through, I will make you the everlasting pride and joy of all generations. You will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, I am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will give you gold and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. No longer will violence be had in your land nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will win no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brother, my sister, This passage sounds prophetic. 
Today's message discusses the restoration of Jerusalem, which was struck down by God in anger. The callousness was so much and God got angry and decided to destroy it. However, God at this point remembered his promise of old. God decided to favor and have mercy on her. And Jerusalem be reconstructed again. After the reconstruction of Jerusalem, business will begin to boom again and again. The city that was rejected will be filled with people. By implication, things will begin to happen because the presence of God has been restored. God himself had decided to accept the people as his own people again. With the presence of the Redeemer in that city, wealth will replace poverty. Justice will be restored. Peace will reign among the citizens. This is the kind of prayer I am saying for Nigeria. That should also be your prayer. When I read that particular passage, I was excited. Verse 13 says, The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the pine and the fair and the cypress together, to adorn the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place of my feet. And this means that uh, the temple in Jerusalem, the state, the nation will be beautiful again. And I speak to you, my listener. I don't know how far you have been abandoned. I don't know the frustrations you are going through. I don't know your pains. As God has restored Jerusalem and promise to make it beautiful again, so shall it be with you. God will change your situation and the situation of your family. He says here in that verse 13, the glory of Lebanon will come to you. All those beautiful things that God has created, God in his infinite mercy and love would allow you to share in his grace again. So if you are crying and you are in distress, you are in pain, wipe your tears. God has remembered you. I look at verse 14 of that passage. He said, the sons of your oppressors will come bowing before you. Hallelujah. All who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. You see, one thing that is very clear about this passage, it says the sons of your oppressors, if not your oppressors, even if they have died after oppressing you, even if they are still there, but God is saying they will bow and their children will bow. He said, those who oppress you will come bowing before you. My brother, you will not die. My sister, you will not die until those that are oppressing you will come and bow down at your feet and acknowledge that our God is God. Not until something like this happens. Some people will not repent. They have pushed you to the wall, pushed you to the wall, and it looks as if you are forgotten. God has not forgotten you. Verse 15 says, Although you have been forsaken and hated, with no one traveling through. Wonderful. He said, I will make you the everlasting pride 
and the joy of all generations. Hallelujah. You are listening to the sound of my voice. You are watching this program. Let me tell you, things will not be the same after this morning. After this moment, your life will be a life of testimony. Say yes, although you have been forsaken, we know what you are going through and God knows what you are going through. You have been hated, you have been abandoned, you have been persecuted, you have been relegated to the background. Those you cared for abandoned you. It looks as if you are nobody. After being kind to them, they have turned around against you today. They have turned against you. My sister, wipe your tears. It's not over until it is completely over. He said, I will make you the everlasting pride. I will make you the everlasting pride. God will be proud of you and we all who are part of this witness, part of this testimony, will also be proud of you. Nothing lasts forever. No problem lasts forever. He said, you will be the joy of all generations. You and your descendants will make impact in this generation. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. No matter how mountainous those problems are, God can comfortably address them. He said, you will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breasts. Then you will know that I, the Lord, I am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. God is taking you place, to places. He's raising you above your strength. Just trust him. He said you will know after now that you have a God. You have a God. He said, instead of bronze, I will give you gold and silver in place of iron. These are mighty and wonderful promises from God Almighty to those who love him and trust in him. My brother, my sister, he said, I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. You have lost peace. You are no longer comfortable. You are no longer happy. But God is still God. God is still alive. Verse 18 says, No longer will violence be had in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your wall salvation and your gates praise. No matter how many demons that are gathering against you, no matter how many people that are working for your downfall, they will be disgraced. They will be put to shame. I want to hear you shout a louder amen. God is ready to do more than you can ask or conceive. He said, no longer will violence be hard in your land. I don't know what your family has been passing through. I don't know what your community has been going through. I don't know what is happening in your own state. But I know this God who has put our trust. When he has spoken, he has spoken. Verse 19 says, The sun will no more be your light day by day, nor the brightness of the moon shine on you. This one takes us beyond here. What God is saying, the word of God is saying here is that while God is taking care of us here, heaven is preparing to receive us at the appropriate time. It says the sun will no longer be our light. This can only be consummated when we have found ourselves in heaven. He said, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. This is going to happen in our time. And it's our prayer that God will cause us to live the kind of life that we honor him here so that we can qualify to spend eternity with him. Verse 20 says, Your sun will never set again, and your moon will win no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. My sister, my brother, 
Do you think you are born to die in that situation? Days of sorrows are over. Every darkness in your life, listen to me, every darkness in your life will be turned into light after the, from this moment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Claim it in your life. That is the word of God for you. Claim it. You are not a child of God for nothing. Trust him and what he can do. When God has taken over our lives, taken over our families, taken over our challenges, taken over our situations, we shall no longer cry again. We shall no longer suffer or have room for injustice. Injustice in our families, injustice in our communities, injustice in our states and nation. Issue of kidnapping will no longer be a problem. God is taking care of his people. That is the essence of the restoration. As he's restoring the Israelites, as he's restoring Jerusalem, he's also restoring this nation. Electoral violence will no longer be there. Human sacrifice will be a thing of the past. Unrighteousness will no longer be in vogue. Banditry will not be celebrated in this country again. Transgender, homosexuality, and divorce will never be mentioned among us. Our God will be our everlasting light. Join us today as we pray that the restoration of this country will come and come very soon. The restoration of our states will come and come very soon. The restoration of our families will come and come very soon. And this soon begins from now. Let us pray. Merciful Father, who is pleased to condescend to speak to us through your word, grant us your grace that we may not be mere hearers of your word, but doers also. Give us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may believe what we have proclaimed and have proclaimed to your people today. Restore us to your original plan so that wealth will replace poverty in our lives and families. Justice and peace restored to our communities, our states, and this nation. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.